know that fairies used to ride on the back of corgis in a battle? And did you know that fairies used corgis as work dogs in their magical kingdom? Well, it's all true. That is, if you believe in Welsh folklore. In today's episode, we'll be exploring one of the oldest and craziest of Welsh legends regarding the discovery of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. And that all starts right now on The Smart Canine, the only show that explores the most interesting stories and facts behind dogs. But before we dive in, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more incredible dog stories like this. Give us a thumbs up to let us know you want more stories about the Welsh Corgi. At first glance, you'd see nothing more than an adorable and fluffy dog. With their long bodies, short stubby legs, and long ears, corgis have undeniably become one of the internet's favorite dog breeds. They're affectionate, friendly, and outgoing dogs. And in the home, they're extremely playful, yet fiercely protective of their loved ones. But the origin story and history of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is a mysterious one, one full of interesting theories, fantasies, and fairy tales, quite literally. So, did corgis originate from prehistoric wolves thousands of years ago? Or did they actually come from something a bit more mythical? Well, they most likely didn't come from fairies. In fact, scientists have proven that all dogs evolved from wolves time and time again, and the corgi is no exception. But to understand this old legend of how fairies gave us the corgi, we have to go back to the 1940s when the poet Anne Biddlecombe of Dorset, England first published a poem called Corgi Fantasy. In this poem, Anne describes corgis as magical creatures developed by the fairies and given to the mortals as a gift. Not only was Anne a famous Pembroke Welsh corgi breeder, but also the founding member of the Corgi League of London. Needless to say, she had a ton of influence in Great Britain's corgi community. And as the popularity of the corgi grew in Wales, this legendary tale gained momentum, having been passed along for several generations. It's worth noting that there are many versions of this legend, and despite popular belief, this legend only explains the birth of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi, and not the Cardigan Welsh Corgi. The first version of this legend takes place during the ancient times of Wales. Back then, these magical fairies lived in harmony with humans in the woodlands of Wales. And while fairies could certainly fly, they didn't have the stamina or the wing strength to fly long distances. So, what was their solution? to create a companion traveler who they could ride upon to travel further distances, much like how past humans relied on horses for long distance traveling. And as you may have guessed, this companion developed by the fairies was none other than the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. However, one day, while the king and queen of the fairies were riding their corgis, they noticed a family of humans hard at work on their farm. Every time they rode by, they would see the family doing laborious work with their little time to rest and enjoy life. According to the legend, the royal fairies were compassionate mythical creatures and were overwhelmed with pity and sadness for the poor humans. But in that moment, distracted by the depressing scene, the king stumbled and fell off his corgi. The queen quickly abandoned her own corgi to tend to the king. And although the two fairies were completely fine, their corgis didn't even notice that their fairies fell off. Instead, they continued riding off into the sunset, concerned about their travel companions getting lost. The king immediately called for a search party to bring the two back. However, the queen stopped him, saying, There's no need. The corgis will find the mortal humans who may need them more than us. And of course, the corgis eventually wandered into the poor family's farm, where the kids brought them into their home to show their parents. The parents knew instantly that these strange and mythical animals were gifts from the fairies and the surrounding woods. From that point on, the corgis became invaluable helpers on the farm and cherished by all the people of Wales. Another version of this legend starts with a fairy war. Two fairy tribes, the Twywith Twag and the Gwilion fairies, had just fought in one of the biggest wars in the fairy kingdom. In the times of war, corgis were more than just working dogs and travel companions. They were also the noble steeds that fairies rode onto the battlefield. They were quick enough to attack but also sturdy enough to withstand the magical firepower, at least according to folklore. But unfortunately, two Twilight Twig fairies were killed during this battle. So while the tribe was having the funeral for the fallen soldiers, two children playing in the woods stumbled upon the ceremony. Overwhelmed with emotion, the tribe decided to give the kids the two corgis that belonged to the now-deceased fairies. And as the corgis were passed on to the children, a fairy spoke fondly of the dog's talents saying they are trained warriors in their own right. 
but they are more than warriors. They are great helpers for their fairy folk. The fairy dogs were perfect for herding cows, he explained. Their short height kept them out of the way of flying hooves when they nipped at angry cow heels. Another common told tale of the discovery of the corgis involves two lucky children. On a bright and sunny day, the two children were playing in the woodlands when they stumbled upon two corgis. At first, they didn't think too much, mistaking these mythical creatures for mere foxes. After all, the corgi's pointed ears, classic red coat, and sharp nose looked eerily similar to that of a fox. After playing with the corgis for a day, the two children decided to take them home. Their father then tells them that the dogs actually belong to the fairies. How did he know this? Well, he points out the mark of the fairy saddle still on the dogs' backs, explaining that fairies would ride them and use them to pull coaches or herd cows. So, in this version of the story, the humans kind of stole these dogs. But regardless of which story told, all signs point to the fairies developing the Welsh Corgi. However, as ridiculous as these legends may seem, it may actually explain a lot about the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. For starters, the word core actually translates to dwarf in English, while the word G translates to dog. Though when put together, the direct translation of Corgi is dog of the dwarfs. The dwarf must be referring to the fairies, right? The high energy and short stature of the battle-forged corgi would be excellent in combat and on the battlegrounds of the much smaller fairies. And if you know corgis, you know they can be quite destructive at times, especially when they don't get the necessary mental and physical exercise that they need. If you can see what my board corgi would do, you'd want her on your side of the battlefield too. Also, most corgis tend to have a darker patch of fur under their shoulders that resembles a mark of the saddle. It's really a lighter marking on each side of the withers that's actually caused by changes in the thickness, length, and direction of the hair growth. In fact, that patch of fur is often still called the fairy saddle today. And if corgis have a tendency to get nippy, well, that's because fairies don't really give gifts without strings attached. It's believed that putting an iron collar on your corgi will keep the dog from biting its owner, since fairies are naturally adverse to those metals. In folklore legend, iron counteracts magic, thus leaving the fairies unprotected. So, do all these signs point to corgis coming from the magical fairies? I still doubt it. In the words of the poet Anne Biddlecombe, this legend is likely just a corgi fantasy. But perhaps there's a more natural and ordinary explanation for the origins of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Realistically, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi probably came from the Flemish weavers who in the 12th century settled down in Pembrokeshire of South Wales. They brought with them the ancestors of the Corgis who were bred with the local cattle dogs, thus adding the spitz-like physical features and the tenacity that we often see with these world-class herding dogs. However, other historians believe that corgis were likely the companion dogs of Scandinavian raiders who brought these dogs with them to the British Isles several hundred years ago. Just take a look at the Swedish Falcon, and you'll notice the eerie resemblance between the two breeds, suggesting that the Falcons were bred with local Welsh dogs that developed the modern corgi that we know and love today. But because historians can't seem to definitely agree on the true origins of the Welsh corgi, we can't completely rule out the fact that they came from fairies, right? Leave a comment and tell us what you think. Where do you think corgis actually originate from? Could these mythical fairies have given us the Welsh corgi, or did they come from a much more natural cause? Make sure to share this video with your corgi-loving friends. And if you enjoyed this video, consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to The Smart Canine for the most interesting stories and facts behind dogs.